The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. I hope everyone had a nice Christmas holiday out there, three day weekend. We got four days of trading to wrap up 2023, and then we get another three day weekend for the New Year's holiday. We kick things off. It's been the trend this year. We got four days left. Why not? We got green across the board right now. S&P's up by just six points. We're trading at 48.11. We were trading at 48.30 as of last week. Let's put it back to a 15-minute chart. Your drop-off on a little bit of a selling session on Wednesday. You almost got it all back by Friday morning, and we're just chopping right above 4,800 at 4,811 in the S&P's. NASDAQ 100. Pretty similar action, right? We're sitting at about the 786. You got back almost that entire sell-off. We're sitting just above 17,000 in the NASDAQ 100, up by 30 points. Dow up by 30 points as well, 37,771. And you got the Russell up by eight this morning. Bitcoin backing off a bit. Been quite a run for Bitcoin. Off $1,000 this morning at 42,705. Crude, check out that bid recently. Yeah, 6 a.m. I was up this morning. It was $74 and change. Look at that acceleration. We trade higher at 8 in the morning. We're above $75. Crude up a buck seventy this morning. You jump over to the gold contract. How about that acceleration on Friday in gold? 2083. We're backing off a bit. Still up technically $1 on the session at 2070. And it's been the focus this year. And why not? We'll take a look at a longer term chart of the 10 year. We're above the 618 of that entire move down to 105.10. Your 10 year is basically flat, one negative by one tick, and we have a yield of 3.91, we'll call it 3.906. So, right in between 3.9 and 3.91. Pretty remarkable when we were just sitting at a 5% yield two months ago, above a 5% yield on the 10 year to under a 4% yield. Quite a trade, man, on fixed income if you got into that action. We jump over to the VIX. With a positive market everywhere, pretty remarkable. We're actually sitting at a 1375 VIX. You may see that trail off as we trail into the end of the year. Can't imagine there's a lot of impetus for selling in the next four days. Why would you lock in all those profits if you actually wanted to sell when you could wait a day or two? You got to add that variable into the equation as well. And yeah, we'll see where we go from here. But we got four trading days, man. New Year's falls on Monday as well. And, uh, yeah, the market will be closed for Monday. We have four trading days, and let's jump around and see what we got going on. And let's talk a little bit of home prices as we kick off a year. I mean, you talk about relentless to the upside, man. How about a 4.8% gain in October compared with October of 2022? That's nationally. And that's a jump from the 4% increase in September. So these are October numbers, right? Among the top 20 cities, Detroit. Largest year-over-year -year gain in home prices at 8.1% is the number there. The 10-city comp was up 5.7%, up from 4.8% in there. Some of the other notables you had, as I mentioned, Detroit at 8.1%, San Diego 7.2%. How about New York? 7.1% gain. Portland falling 0.6%. You got winners and losers in there. Home prices have held up so well, and now we're getting a little bit of a reprieve on rates, and we'll see if that can help the market at all. All right, what are we – what uh, what do we have pulled up to talk about this morning as we go through the last four trading days of the year? And this one's an interesting one from the journal. So they're talking about retailers bracing for their post-holiday returns hangover. It was interesting. I found myself saying, um, boy, I really better pull back after Christmas, right? Very easy to rationalize spending a lot of money during Christmas, buying presents for your friends and family, your children, your parents, your grandparents. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see, especially in this economic environment. Okay, that's the kicker here. Americans are estimated to buy more than $5 trillion of goods this year, right? Yet shoppers last year returned 16.5% of items they purchased online in stores valued at nearly 
19 billion dollars and double the percentage of goods in 2019. Yeah, how about that part of it, right? Pretty remarkable. Um, so after you get the holidays, they trigger a costly returns hangover. The returns either the profits, as you'd expect. Uh, it's going to be a trillion dollars. Imagine that, a trillion dollars. Americans are estimated to buy more than $5 trillion of goods. And here's what I'll say, folks, okay? Take advantage of that more often. There are times when retailers offer you, Amazon in particular, okay, a refund policy, free returns for 30 days. This is a business proposition, okay? So free returns for 30 days. It's basically almost a 30-day 30 30 day free trial, right? 30-day money-back guarantee. Take advantage of that. I tell people when they sign up for the newsletter, right, and they want to cancel, and like, ah, sorry, I didn't, don't say sorry. You tried out the newsletter. That's the proposition. We're giving you some value here. If you find that you like it, you want to keep it, that's tremendous. Then you're going to pay for it. You don't. You, you, you maintained it for 30 days. That's your trial period. I'll give you an example. Generators, okay? Home Depot and Lowe's each offer 30-day free returns for generators during the storm season in florida okay you can go purchase a generator you i'm deviating but this is something it's a business proposition and more often people don't do this and this is not stealing anything from the companies okay because guess what they want you to take these generators because they want you to keep them probably use them but it's such an, a valuable proposition in many instances for the consumer okay where you can go there you can purchase a generator. You have 30 days. If you want to use that generator, that's fine. If not, you return it to Home Depot or Lowe's. Now, generators, you can't open them. You can't unbox them. You can't take off the packaging. This is real deal. You can't open it. You can't use it. That's not the business proposition, okay? But I'm telling you, it's a valuable proposition, and this article is speaking to how many times shoppers are aware of that, man. You buy two things, right? Online retailers and clothing have this problem all the time. They have almost a 50% return rate, some, because what happens? People order two products. They order a large and a medium. They order a large and an extra large, and they know right away, well, I'll just return the one that doesn't fit, stuff like that. I can't believe it's a trillion dollars, though. Um, but keep that in mind in storm season, man, because that's something that, as a consumer, you have the ability to do as a business transaction with a company like Home Depot and Lowe's, and... It's a valuable proposition. I found myself last storm season saying, you know, it's remarkable if we lived in a, this is like preaching a little, right? But if we lived in a less privileged area, right, where we didn't take for granted that we had electricity, air conditioning, water, and food, and there was ever a retailer that said to you, now you have to basically, you know, pay for that for 30 days so that that money is on hold. You have to have that capital. But if you have a credit card, we say, ah, uh, yeah, if you want to just put a down payment on that generator, I'll let you just hold it for 30 days. Worst case, the storm hits, you have it, you want to pay for it, it's yours. If it doesn't hit, you just return it. I feel like in many countries, people will take advantage of that instantly, but here, they just don't do it because unfortunately, they're just lazy. They don't want to go pick up the generator and then have to return it, etc. Uh, nonetheless, trillion dollars. So be careful some of those retailers, man, especially as we approach the consumer potentially feeling some of the heat of this economy. All right. We're going to talk some equities when we get back, man. We've got four trading days left. we got the S&Ps up by five. We're going to jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Apple on the Magnificent 7, I guess now. Apple shares. They're going to be flat on the open at 193. We'll take a look at Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Tesla, and we'll look at the video when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up by five right now. I mentioned, let's jump around to some of these FANG stocks. Magnificent 7, Amazon shares. They're going to be up by about 50 pennies to kick off the trading session. Quite a year for Amazon. Let's put on a three-year weekly. You kick off the year at what, 82 bucks? We're almost going to double the share price right now at 153. Now, what I was talking about previously on last week's programs, early in the week, I think it was, the number of A to B, C to Ds that potentially could be setting up, man. This acceleration that we got in October, that could be the beginning of your C to D leg, okay? And if you talk about a company like Amazon, ballparking, you're going from about $80 up to that B point of almost 145, that's about a 65 A to B leg. You're trading with a C point of about 120, you add 65 to 120, 185. And the kicker is, where does that bring you? That brings you basically to the highs that we had at the end of 2021, okay? And what a way to accelerate past the B point, right? The end of year acceleration where this thing just traded from 120 you had dramatic volume off of that low. Your C point is the earnings, okay, as we accelerate from an area of almost 120, which also correlates to the 382 retracement that you got in Amazon, that pullback we got from basically the week of September 11th down to uh, the week of October 23rd when you made a low of 118.35. So that's Amazon shares, okay? You jump over to Microsoft. Now, Microsoft, what do they do? Microsoft. They accelerate back. Now, this is a different story. Amazon was the September high. Microsoft makes the high in July. We pull back to the 382. You pull back there initially. We make a low again. That low initially in August was 311.55. You're looking at 309.45. We make that low in September within less than a dollar of that 382 area. Now, Microsoft, man, if you're talking about, and let's just. Activate for this for a second. Let's just say we take this from when it began at the beginning of the year. I mean, it touches that 382 perfectly, okay? If you take that acceleration from the week of January 2nd up to the highs of July, that is an A leg from about 220, we'll ballpark it, up to a high, what, 365? So that's at 145 is your A to B leg, and 145 off of 310 is bringing you to 455 not outlandish quite a number but what are you talking about 
455, what, 75 points? That's a 20% acceleration from Microsoft shares above where you're possibly trading at. And what we did do, which is nice to see, is what did you do? You got above that area. You got above your B, your potential B point, okay? What do we do? We had volume on their earnings as well. We trade higher. We have volumes at these highs. We've now gotten above that area. We come back and we're testing that line before we possibly trade higher. Pretty cool how this goes. Let's jump over to Google shares, okay? Google. I mean, look at how they all had their nice little A to B and then a B to C 3A2 retracement. They're everywhere in the biggest stocks in, in the world. Your A point, beginning of the year in February, at about $90. Your B point on Google shares, we'll call it 140 okay? Might be a little bit higher, naturally. That's where I have it, but let's just call it 140 That's a $50 A to B leg. Your C point pulls back to almost 120 That's pushing almost 170 for Google. Again, you're talking about 20%, basically above where you're trading at right now. NVIDIA, a little bit of a different story. They're their own animal. Not sure that one's going to play through, play out. You never got back to the 382. You know, you're up almost 500% this year. So that one does not line up exactly like it. Tesla shares, not quite the animal as well. Different story. You know, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, we just walked through it, right? Apple shares, that's the other one. So what do we do? We got 382s. Look how they're all trading, right? We're, we just went through it. Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Apple. Okay, now... It makes sense because, and let's go over Apple first, and then we'll do the NASDAQ 100, okay? Apple shares trade an A point from 130 up to 200. Nice, simple math. You pull back to 170. You got an A to B leg that's $70. 70 on 170 is 240. And 240 is about 20% above the recent highs. Now, of course it's going to be. If they're all doing 3A2 retracements and they have similar A to B legs, to complete the B to C, the C to D leg, okay, would bring you about 20% above the recent highs. It's not outlandish, man. You know, it shouldn't be outlandish when you look at a company like Apple that's up over 50% this year, okay? When all we're talking about is maybe this thing does another 20% with the FANG stocks leading the NASDAQ 100. Now, check it out. It would make sense that if I just went through Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, okay, there may be some others out there, too. We'll take a look. But, boy, that's quite a quattro of equities. Where does that bring us in the NASDAQ 100? Well, what do we just do? You talk about simple math. 11,000 up to 16,000. Five point, 5,000 point, not five. 5,000 point A to B leg. What do you do? You pull back to the 382. Where's the 382 bring you back? Almost 14,000. You're adding 5,000 onto 14. Where's that bringing you? That bringing you up to 19,000. And here's the kicker. In the NASDAQ 100, 19,000, you're only talking about 12% of them, okay? So you may have the Magnificent 7 leading the NASDAQ 100 yet again, because if you get those types of rallies, you get Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google all charging 20% higher. Meanwhile, the NASDAQ 100 only has about 12% higher to go to complete its A to B, C to D. Pretty remarkable that it's got only got to go another... 2,000 points, which at this point is between 11 and 12% higher to complete the 5,000 point B, excuse me, C to D leg. And if you're looking for some symmetry and you're looking for some timeline, okay, and you say, where could that possibly be time-wise? Well, your A to B leg lasted about seven or eight months, okay? So if that's going to be the case here, that's going to bring you into June or July of this coming year. And that's maybe where you accelerate. Pretty cool how those all line up, though, right? You have your A to B leg. You have a potential C to D. They all pull back to the 3A2, okay? So keep your eye on it, for sure. And, um, some, what are some of the others? Yeah. Oh, Meta. Yeah, Meta is its own animal as well. I mean, these ones that had, you know, triple, quadruple baggers almost, and I think Meta's up 260%, something like that, 240%, something like that. You know what was the biggest one? One of the biggest? MicroStrategy for Bitcoin. Now, I was reading this article. Check this out. There's your chart of MicroStrategy. Well, 
if you loaded it up, you got over a 300% gain, man. You kicked off the year at about 150. You're trading at 619. They have 90% of their net worth in Bitcoin. So it's probably a decent place to, to stash your money if you're looking for exposure to Bitcoin. They actually own the Bitcoin. They have it. And they have 175,000 Bitcoin. And so that's what you're buying into. What I did find interesting is how they're ramping up their bets over and over, right? Second quarter of this year, they had 150,000. They now have 175,000. So they've added 25,000 Bitcoin the last six months or so. Everywhere they've added has been a profitable venture, man, as this thing has traded from 30 to, to 42,000 right now. But yeah, they go over how, you know, they even beat the likes of some of those other equities I just mentioned. Yeah, their Bitcoin alone are worth $7.65 billion. They're worth about $9 billion. We'll finish this conversation up. We're coming back for the open, folks. Markets in positive territory. Four trading days left in 2023. We'll be right back, TFNN folks. has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well so it's always at your reach to sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders just visit the front page of tfnn.com currencies commodities and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe which is why it's a great time to try out teddy kegstat's tiger forex report Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You get the Dow. 
fading slightly into the red, down 12 points this morning, 37,728. You got the S&Ps, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. We open in positive territory, taking a look at the S&Ps. So we talked about the Magnificent Seven. If they trade higher, they're obviously going to help the S&Ps if they all get that 20% acceleration. Now, taking a look at the S&Ps, I mean, where could you take this? Really, it's a one-way straight line move. began on March 13th, okay? And it is interesting to see how things are different, right? Look at how the S&Ps... We're at the same price that it was at in almost January to where you were in March versus the NASDAQ 100 already had that first quick acceleration out of the gate. The beginning of this year, we got a pullback in the S&Ps. That move really began. You can call it 3,800 for simple math because that's where you were at the end of 2022, but just above that area, maybe 40 points above that area, 3,840. But simple math, you're talking about, look at this leg, 3,800 to 4,600. What's that? That's an 800 point A to B, C to D. You take your C point at about 41.22. That's bringing you what? To 49.22. Even if you take off those 40 extra points, you're talking about 48.80. Point being, we're almost there. The S&Ps have almost done it. Your A to B. A point, March 13th. B point, July 24th. C point, October 23rd. D point. Less than 100 points away as we end the year. So how does that look if Apple, Microsoft, Google, what was the other one? And Meta, no, the other one, what was, I'm losing it. Uh, if all of those stocks do their 20%, NASDAQ goes up 12%, and the S&P's only got, what, 30, 40 points above the high to, to reach that A to B. What that means is you're going to have the other stocks struggling. If you have the biggest magnificent seven stocks pushing 10 to 20 percent higher and you have the s p only going 50 points higher what's going to be happening as they say the rich get richer and the you know that's how it works in in times of economic stress okay and i'm not predicting stress the economy is doing well man but there are markers that there's going to be a little bit of a lag and a catch-up probably right you got credit card debt going up you have delinquencies rising to a certain degree you have retailers talking about uncertainty and slowdown so listen to those numbers read the charts and it'll be interesting to see as we go three or six months down the road as inflation has cooled is there lag and that's where you're going to see potentially that march cut march 20th put it on your calendar that's what they're thinking that's the rhetoric and that's the worry that the fed has that if they're too tilted to the side of fiscal restraint. Looking at these charts, man, you know, A to B, C to D only brings your S&P slightly above where we're at right now, brings the NASDAQ 100 up about 11 to 12% above where we're at right now. But that same A to B, C to D is going to bring those FANG stocks about 20% we're above where they are right now. All right, what else we got going in the headlines? Yeah, this one was out there over the weekend. The U.S. strikes targets in Iraq after drone attack injures troops. I believe it was three were injured. Hopefully they're doing okay. Um, just more geopolitical risk, man. This, you know, on the heels of what's going on in the Red Sea. Military forces conducted necessary and proportionate strikes on three facilities used by Kataib Hezbollah and affiliated groups in Iraq. Um And these are usually Iran-aligned groups in Iraq and Syria. So we'll see if that ratchets up at all. You have crude up a bit this morning on some of that volatility. We jump over to crude up $2 now. Oh, I'd go out and fill up that gas tank, man, today because guess what? Take a look at this chart on a technical basis, man. What did we just do? We just touched an area that is hardcore support. I'll call it hardcore. That'll be a new term. Hardcore support uh, on the $70 area. I mean, look at it. We chopped around from May 1st all the way to July 1st. Two months in the beginning of the um, this year, it built a floor there. Similar action in March. Similar action in December as well. Okay, and what do we just do? We came down. We touched $70. We're back at 75 you push the upper boundary, you're back to 90 in no time. And folks, everything going on in the world right now, think about it. You got Russia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, the Red Sea. And we're sitting at $75 right now in the price of crude. Okay, what else do we got going on? Let's check out what we got pulled up here. Ah, this one. This is a good one. 
We'll jump through some charts. Where did Americans put their money this year? Everywhere. And guess what? They did pretty well across the board, man. How about this one? Everyone loading up into the S&P 500, man. And this is month by month, okay? Monthly flows to the Spider S&P 500 ETF. It might not... This is not indicative of a late inning rally, folks, okay? We're making all-time highs, and this is not indicative of a late inning rally. That's with the charts, where they are, etc. Combine that with this. Assets in money market funds. Six trillion dollars. Folks, that's only 50 billion. That's 40 billion. Okay? That's 40 billion. And this one means there's six trillion dollars. And really, that's up two to three trillion dollars over the last five or six years. It would take a lot of monthly months, monthly flows, excuse me, of 40 billion to get you to the number of two trillion even, right? I mean, think about that. What would it take? It would take 10, 20, 25 months to get to one trillion. So that would be 50 straight months. You could have $40 billion of inflows, 50 straight months. And it's probably going to go up as these rates come down. But just at 40 billion, you could do five zero, 50 straight months. Yeah. Yeah, four years. Four years you could plow that every single month, and that would just bring you back to $4 trillion where you were prior to COVID. That's all it would be to show you the type of money that may come in this market. Money market yields, we all know how that's going, man. 5.2% free money there. They talk about um, retail trading, the daily average volume when you're talking about fixed income, treasuries, and CDs. Look at the spike, man. It makes sense they were doing nothing. Even corporate bonds and even munis, you saw a spike. But treasuries and CDs, not surprising with the type of rates you saw. And there it is. That's what the rates did for investors. Interest income generated by money market funds from nothing to $300 billion. $300 billion on money market funds. They talk about crypto in here. That one's accelerated as well. But pretty remarkable when you put these all. What I found so remarkable is saying, okay, well, this one hasn't come back down at all. We've seen the slight rise here in the inflows to the ETFs. And what does that mean? Well, there is still a lot of money in those money markets. And what's going to happen when those money markets start going back down to 25 to 3%, right? They're sitting at 5.2 to 5.5 right now. But guess what? That's probably about to change on March 20th. But not yet. We've got four trading days left in 2023. And I don't think anyone's running for the door just yet. S&P is 4814. So keep that one in mind, man. Those FANG stocks, pretty interesting how they all line up, right? Let's check to them as we jump to this break. Amazon shares, flat this morning on the open. The big dog, Apple, we'll call that flat. Down 18 pennies for Apple. Microsoft shares, up three tenths. Yeah, Microsoft, Google, Apple, and Amazon. Those are the four. Put them on your charts on a daily basis. A to B, C to D. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Well, Microsoft and Google, they're doing their part this morning. They're up. Microsoft, look at this acceleration, man. Microsoft up by six tenths percent right now, charging higher. Google shares up by eight tenths percent right now, charging higher. You get the NASDAQ 100. We're up by about four tenths percent. Apple and Amazon, both pretty much flat to kick off the trading session. Let's jump over to some of the retailers. Walmart shares flat right now. You jump over to Target shares flat as well. TJX, they're up by a bit right now. Coal shares up by 1.3%. We take a little bit of a longer-term look at coals. Be careful on coals, man. Looks like $30 is resistance on this area. You're pushing 28 right now. And I tell you, as a consumer, folks, okay, and it's important, you know, listen, it, depending on how you're trading. You're trading coals for a day trade or something like that. You're trading on volume. Okay, you don't need to understand the dynamics of the the desirability of being in their stores and the price points if you're trading it for value in any extended period of time or you're trading it for a longer longer fundamental bias it's important to sometimes listen to yourself i think to myself man if i had ever bought amazon the moment that i signed up for prime and i tell you folks i appreciated very early on i gotta figure out the year man i've been in there for a while 15 years, 16 years, 17 years, something bonkers, man, because it blew my mind as somebody that was early to the adoption of online and online retail. I remember being very willing to pay 10 to $20, getting scam calls, excuse me, being able to pay 10 or $20 per delivery, okay? This is going back, 2006, something like that, I think. And they came out with a product. I think it was 59 bucks at the first time. I said, well, that's fine. I got to order. All I got to do is get three items delivered to me for free that I was paying $20 for to get delivered at that time. And I, made, I understood the tremendous value. And what did I do? I started ordering a million things from there because I couldn't believe that I could get stuff delivered to my door for free. And you know what the kicker was at the time? You know what they had what was pretty cool at the time? Is that they had overnight delivery that you could pay for on Amazon as part of your Prime. You could pay for overnight delivery for only like six dollars or nine dollars. So, and that used to cost like thirty bucks at a normal place. So, if I wanted something the next day, I even found tremendous value by paying a discounted price for that. Point being, listen to yourself, okay? Back to Kohl's. Kohl's has a problem, man. They have a problem, okay? I enjoy going and doing some shopping shopping with Tommy, especially. Right, he enjoys playing with some toys. Maybe, maybe we get him some clothes. Right, maybe I'll go grab a coffee. We'll go around. Kind of the Toys R Us experience when you don't want to go to the park, we don't want to go to Bush Gardens, whatever it is. There's that side of things, which is Target encapsulates well. Okay, but 
Kohl's does not have that aspect of things because they're just not that enjoyable and they're super expensive, yet they have almost a discount feel to them, okay? I always say if I go into Dick's Sporting Goods, I know I'm paying a premium price, man. They got great products, though. The feeling of the store is great. They have everything there. They have sporting goods. They have all that stuff. You go into a big mall usually. Maybe we'll go eat at the Cheesecake Factory after that or something like that, right? You're paying a little bit of premium. Kohl's, they're just as expensive, and it's not – the experience that should go along with being as expensive as it should, to put it lightly. So they have some issues, and I would pay attention to that in a longer-term basis. They're up by 1.7%. Um, maybe maybe I'm wrong, right? You can always be wrong. But look at that $30 area. You know, Maybe if you trade above this area, you look for a retest on Kohl's. That's where I could see getting in for a trade. At least you have your back against the wall right now. All right, $30, man. That was the area that you traded down to initially. You oscillated around. Now we've traded below it and we're back up to it and we're oscillating around potentially $30. But be careful of Kohl's shares out there. Okay, what else have we got going on, folks? I was talking about all those A to B, C to D legs. One of the things we have is we have a bunch of great archive webinars at TFNN right under the services tab. All right. It's a great time of the year. Maybe the kids are off. Maybe you're off on vacation as well. We got a three day weekend coming up this weekend for New Year's, which is always great. My dad did this webinar. OK, if you want to learn about A to B's, C to D's, you see it, the number two point that's covered, A to B structures. That's what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with it, he combines that with quality volume, which I'm looking at as well. You can't deny volume, right? Fibonacci. I mean, when I'm going through some of those numbers, I assume people have some idea of what I'm talking about. And I know that's not the case, but it's a little bit too time intensive to go back and explain a Fibonacci retracement zone with an A to B, C to D leg. Folks, check out this webinar. You get a signed copy of my dad's book. We'll physically mail that to you. OK, we'll send that out in the mail. You get the book. You get the webinar. You get his methodology. And when he did this, he did it live. So you're seeing a live webinar that he's doing as he's presenting that, okay? And when he did it, you're getting basically four and a half hours of education, folks. He went from nine till noon, three-hour session to begin things, and then he came back in the afternoon from 12.30 to two, um, $295, and you also get a month of his newsletter, which is pretty cool. Now, the newsletter tab, you jump over, you say, how much is that? 169 okay? So for the whole thing, 295 you get the Timing of the Trade webinar, you get the book that's mailed to you, you get market insights free for a month, and that newsletter does not renew. You're not signing up for a recurring payment. That is just part of the webinar. It's a $295 payment for that four-and-a-half-hour webinar. It's right under the Services tab, folks, right there in that corner. Um, check that out on the front page of TFNN. And listen, we got a bunch, right? If you haven't attended any of Tim Ward's webinars, Check those out. We have the archive of those webinars up there at 149. Basil Chapman's live tra trading webinars. Larry Pesavento's live trading webinars. You can learn just as much in those folks as watching the archives that they do and seeing how they're trading the markets as they're trading live. So if you're looking for something to fill your time over the holidays, folks, but I especially want to bring up my dad's webinar. It's a tremendous value, and we don't actually promote it enough for the value that it provides. When you think about 295 you get the book. I mean, folks – the month of his newsletter and the book alone is basically almost $295, and you're getting a five-hour webinar that he used to charge like $3,000 for back in the day as part of the Master Trader webinar for those really back in the day. So check that out in the newsletters, uh, excuse me, services tab. If you want to get more into ABCDs, A to B, C to Ds, ABC formations, quality volume, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, and swing points, as my dad would say. And he'll be coming up live at 3 o'clock today. All right, we are positive markets. Let's check in on some of the currencies and see how we're trading. Dollar index right now, we're backing off a bit. You're at 105.60. We jump over to the gold contract. Gold off about three bucks. We're trading at 2066 right now. Great time to try out that gold report as well as we get some volatility in currencies and commodities. We jump over to the 10 year. What could be a year of cutting? We'll see how we come in. We're sitting at 112.19 right now, and as I mentioned to kick off the program, we're sitting at a yield of about 3.9 in the 10-year. 3.9 on the dot as I speak right now on that 10-year. All right, we jump around to some of the others that have lagged a bit. Disney off a quarter percent right now, trading at 90.79. Yeah, look at this thing longer term. 
Now, the only thing I'll say, man, is you've been building some cars for about a year and a half in Disney at $92, and you're getting in at a price tag that basically was our spike low during COVID when the world didn't know if movie theaters and you know, amusement parks would ever cease to exist again as the pandemic's accelerated throughout the world. They got some problems, man, but you got a two to three year time horizon. I think there's a lot of potential with Disney trading at $90 right now. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment, December 26th. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up by 7, NASDAQ 100 up by 53, all the markets in positive territory. We jump over to Coinbase, quite a year for them and a year of crypto. From 31 up to 174, the last couple months, a real acceleration on the heels of that Bitcoin. I was reading an article out this morning as well. Uh, yeah, how about CZ, right? I mean, I remember this coming out. So he might do 18 months, and that's two weeks for every billion dollars he has. Think about that. Think about that. Right? What is that? What is he getting paid a day to sit in the slammer? $70 million a day is the way you could run it for 18 straight months to be worth about $37 billion. How about that for math? Right? Where's the incentive there? Where you're incarcerated. Now, you could say, well, if you're incarcerated forever, you never get to use that money. But you're only talking about 18 months, man. A lot of people would do 18 months in jail if they're getting paid $70 million a day to do it. I'm distorting things a bit, okay? He's got a company. He's founded it. There's tremendous value. They are paying fines. 
but no disincentive there. And this article talking about $25 billion is what he made in 2023. And that is the year that they made a deal with Department of Justice. He's pleading guilty. They're going to pay $4.3 billion. Yeah, there it is. $4.3 billion in fines is what Binance is going to agree to pay. Okay. And he has pleaded guilty to criminal anti-money laundering allegations. And he's going to pay $50 million fine. OK, and he faces as many as 10 years. There it is. But he's expected to get no more than 18 months under the deal. Um, just keep that in mind when you hear all this stuff about what he did and facilitating. I mean, it was anti-money laundering is what they were facilitating. This is very different from the Ponzi scheme that SBF was running. OK, but they were knowingly allowing the facilitated nature of funds to be distributed in countries that support terrorism to that degree nonetheless 37 billion dollars it's been quite a year in crypto man you take over a look at coinbase uh, armstrong the founder and ceo of that company making a whole bunch of money as well and we talked about uh micro strategy with quite an acceleration up about 300 percent for them as well all right folks thanks so much for kicking off the week the final four trading days of the year right here we got live programming going on throughout the day we got our man basil chapman he's coming up next folks we got our man steve rhodes we got fast market from the schwab network we got our man larry pezzavento and we